League of Legends was released October 27, 2009. Remember that date. It'll be on the test later. Welcome back to Potentially Perfect, home of the world's most scatological gamers. My name is Delapo, and I uh, want to let you guys know that I'm starting another giveaway for or when we reach 600 subscribers. Uh, just follow the link in the description below, and you could win um, this Ash Funko Pop figurine. Right? And as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, or share the video. So there's been a lot of talk about microtransactions, loot boxes, and other forms of monetization. I didn't talk about them in the past because I believed that enough people were talking about it. Um, up until I started playing League of Legends, that is. This isn't going the direction you think it is. It's been said by many a publisher that producing certain games of certain types um, don't make money. If it were up to them, they'd make one or two games a year and sponge off of those until the next year rolls around to produce that next yearly iteration, kind of like Call of Duty. And logistically, I completely understand this. If you can make the same amount of money doing less work, why, why wouldn't you want to do that? That's literally the American dream. But what gives me pause is the gamer in me. I wholeheartedly hate the idea of less games to choose from. I actually think the prospect of making less games per year is going to hurt these publishers in the long run. It stands to reason that if you put all your eggs in one basket and then someone sits on that basket, you are F-U-C-K-E-D fucked. So with all of that said, it seems like all these publishers have a dream game in mind. As a note, these companies that I'm referring to are Activision, EA, and Ubisoft. The interesting thing is that each one of these companies tends to put out a certain kind of game. And I'm talking about the big budget online multiplayer game. You've got Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Rainbow Six, respectively. And these are just to name a few. Now, the online multiplayer thing isn't new. In fact, we've had it for quite some time now. But what makes it really interesting in this point in history is that they're marketing it like it's the second coming. And don't get me wrong, they're popular. They're very popular. But there's one problem with a lot of these games that people tend to ignore. And it's a point that Jim Sterling actually brought up in a recent video. It's that these games compete for time. I want to lay some serious numbers on you here. Just, just a few numbers here, okay? There are 24 hours in a day. Simple, right? Yeah. I started playing League of Legends around the end of last year and now have amassed over 230 hours. That's like 10 days worth of just sitting in front of my computer playing League of Legends. One game. This is what true addiction looks like. And this is what those game companies want. They want people to live in their games as long as possible. Why? Well, for several reasons. The longer you play a game, the more likely you are to spend money. Of course. But even more, it gives those people who regularly spend money anyways a reason to keep coming back. You can buy all the skins and loot boxes in the world, and it doesn't matter if there's no one to show those off to. Honestly, at that point, there's no reason to play. So then there becomes this balancing game of making something that's rewarding and interesting and keeps people coming back. This is why those MMOs of old worked for so long. I remember the Battlefront devs getting a lot of flack for saying that people enjoy the grind. Well, it's actually kind of true. Uh, granted, they said some other things that were really dumb and probably should have just left it to people enjoy a grind, but then they didn't. No, but. People feel accomplishment in getting further and further for their efforts. And for a lot of people, it's all that time and effort that they put into a game that keeps them coming back. It's hard to give up on all that loot and gear and skins you've gathered from all those dungeons, you know, and just, and just throw it away. Why? Why? And this is partially why I don't think Destiny worked out as a franchise. It was kind of like Diet MMO. And don't get me wrong, I wanted Destiny to work out so badly. Ever since I played Borderlands, I knew that an FPS that was also an RPG could work. And I genuinely believe that Destiny did have the potential to be the next WoW. But at its core, it just didn't have what made those MMOs successful. Namely the fact that MMOs have decent endgame. And this isn't a bash on something that's already been bashed a billion times, but really, at the end of the day, you have to give those people at the end game something to do to keep them coming back because people who join the game want to see that there are things to do at the end that will keep them coming back. And those people who are at the end 
want to make sure there are people continuously there to play with and you get the point. Destiny just didn't have a lot to hold me there. However, I do feel as though I got my $60 worth, so I don't feel robbed in that situation. It was just a game that I picked up, played for some time, and put down. But I do think that if game companies want to have the longevity that games like WoW and League of Legends have, something's gotta give. And I genuinely think they should start with the price of entry. To quote a very lovely podcast, you can't beat free. And that's very accurate. I'm gonna get a little dark here, but I hope you see the parallel that I'm trying to build. It's often said that the easiest way to get someone hooked on something is to give the first dose away for free. Sound familiar? This is why Fortnite took off, no matter what you think of it. This is why League of Legends has been around for almost nine years. There isn't a magic formula, it's actually really simple. We've now been made aware that these companies are making more money on microtransactions than they actually are on game sales. So it would be insane for us to believe that it's too expensive for these games to be produced any other way. Come on now. The problem is something they've driven themselves to. Think about it. If I put millions of dollars into a game and it's advertising and it fails, it's gonna hit really hard. But it's gonna hit even harder if that was the only game I produced that year. So there's gotta be some kind of balance that can be drawn up. So what would I suggest? How about you adopt a bit of the old formula and evolve it a little bit? How about a free multiplayer online game that keeps people coming back with a nice single player game to supplement it? That single player game, obviously, you could charge full price for. But let's be honest, that probably won't happen up until this whole bubble that is the games of service thing bursts. Now back to League of Legends. This is a game that I believe that everyone should try out at least once if you call yourself a gamer. I'm not saying you're gonna like it. In fact, it's actually very likely that you'll hate it. But its success can't be denied. There's gotta be something there. League of Legends is a game that's existed in a state that's basically untouched for almost nine years. It has essentially three maps and every game tends to follow the same format. People kill minions for about 10 minutes, then everybody runs to mid to fight each other until one team eventually pulls away and then it ends. And yes, I've played that for over 200 hours. The developers can basically coast on this from now until forever by simply adding new champions and skins. And guess what? That's basically what they've done. The game seriously has over 100 characters now. That's insanity. So how do they make their money? Riot points. Tons and tons of Riot points. You see, Riot points are the game's premium currency. In order to unlock things like characters, you have to use what's called Blue Essence. You get Blue Essence by doing things like opening loot boxes, winning matches, and completing missions when they're available. However, the only way to get free skins is to open loot boxes. Now, loot boxes can be obtained for free by playing the game, and if someone on your team gets an S rank, on a character you haven't yet received a chest for, then you get a chest. But it's not that simple. You see, in order to open that chest, you must collect three key fragments. <sighs> the key fragments are given to you by getting honor. At the end of every match, um, you can honor your teammates by saying, hey, this guy wasn't a dick this whole time. Let's give him some honor. And uh, eventually that honor stacks up and you get a key fragment. You need three key fragments to open a chest, or you could buy a chest and key. See what I'm getting at? So basically that all sums up to if you want really cool skins, uh, you better just whip out that old credit card. And I've done it. Yeah. I really enjoy having those bits of flair. I like having that thing that somebody else doesn't have. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, granted, the game is free, so it's not like I paid anything to play it but I've spent 200 hours in it, so I feel a bit more comfortable throwing that $80 that I have in. Honestly, as a whole, I think this game is a lot more fair than other games that I paid a full price for are. I feel as though I can get most of what I want simply by working at it. And honestly, anything that would be purchased anyways is simply cosmetic. But like I said, it's all about the time that I spent in it. That time that I put into League of Legends hasn't been put into any other online games. This is the curse of the online multiplayer game. More than anything, more than money, it's a battle for your time. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got to go feed the enemy laner. Stay perfect.